Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about three absolutely crazy, wacky tricks in Power Query, especially with the M language. Now, I'm going to rate these tricks in on two scales. One is the utility, how useful are they? And the second one is the wackiness quotient, how crazy are they? First, let me just talk about the most craziest and the most useless trick. And then when we approach towards the end of the video, I'll talk about the most useful and the most wacky trick that you've probably not seen anywhere else. Let's start. All right, trick number one. How do insane people write their queries? Now, this is what a sane person would have written, like the query that I'm actually showing you on the screen. Take a look, a couple of steps. We have say, simple data, products, units, price, and the category. In the next step, the change type step gets applied. I add a column, sales column, which is nothing but the multiplication of units into price. I group the rows and I just find out the category wise total sales. And I then, then sort the sales into descending order, the largest to smallest right here. That's how a sane person would just write the query. Pretty good. Now, in order for the query to still work, it's not necessary that you need to maintain the order of the steps. Please take a look. Let's just make the query absolutely insane. I'm just going to jump over to the advanced editor. In the advanced editor, what I'm going to do is just going to change the order of all the steps. I don't really care what order are they till the step till the time all the steps are there. The query is going to still work fine. Please take a look. The sorted order was the last one. The sorted rows was the last one. I'll just take it somewhere in the middle. The source comes up right in the end. Group goes up on the top change type comes right here so i have completely jumbled up the order of this particular query in no particular order and you can see that for now the query is giving me an error uh, what's the error now whenever you're writing a query in the advanced editor you have to make sure that the last step of the query does not contain a comma it should be without the comma because that's the ending step that's part one so i delete that comma and uh, I have to make sure that all the other steps need to end with a comma. So you can see that this particular step is not really ending with a comma and I can just supply a comma right here. Now I don't really change what I am retrieving of the query. So sorted rows is still what I am deriving out of the query, but I've just jumbled up all the steps right here, which are there in the advanced editor. Pretty cool. Let's just see what happens. So if I now click on done, I still get to have the output unchanged. Absolutely the same output that I'm getting earlier is also what I'm getting as of now. But voila, what do you see? All the steps are just gone. Now, in order for the query to function fine, it's not necessary that you have the steps in the order. Power Query still will function just as the way it should, even if the steps are not in order. If you want your people around you to absolutely go insane, you might as well use this trick on them and they will just wonder what happened to my query, even though the answer is right. Now, before you just go, I want to talk about that what happened and why is the query working absolutely fine. So if I just jump over to the advanced editor once again, and if you take a look at the advanced editor, what is happening is that the query gets evaluated in a sort of a lazy evaluation fashion. Let me help you understand. So because you are saying that eventually the output is going to be sorted rows, what Power Query does is rather than evaluating the query from the top, it actually evaluates the query from the bottom. So first it's actually going to say, hey, since you're asking for sorted rows as an output, let me just go see where is sorted rows. So it's actually going to find out sorted rows automatically right here. Now, once Power Query starts to evaluate sorted rows as the step, it's going to see that, hey, for to be able to evaluate this particular step, I would need group rows. And where is group rows? Probably somewhere up on the top. It's going to find that automatically right here. Then it's going to see, hey, to be able to evaluate group rows, I would need added custom. And added custom is right here. So Power Query does all of that match the following automatically, even though the steps are not in the order. And that's the beauty of the M language, right? So you don't really need to have the steps in the order and it just works absolutely fine. Now, same people, because you are doing the steps with the user interface, the query generates step by step by step, but that's not the case. If you want to just make people around you absolutely crazy, you might as well use them. Now, for the next trick, let's just start to use something more meaningful that will just benefit the kind of work that you're doing. Proceed to trick number two. All right, trick number two. Now, you can break the query somewhere in the middle and use the two queries to feed other queries. Please take a look. Here, my query goes from the source, change type, added custom. Until this particular step, I'm able to take a look at the products and the details of all the products. But in the very next step, I happen to group the table 
by the category and now I'm taking a look at only the sales of that particular category. Maybe I want to not only keep the grouped step, but I also want to retain the details of the products. So what I can do is at this very step, I can break this query into two parts and extract all the previous steps into a different query automatically. How do I do that? I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to say extract everything that has been done as a previous step. So extract previous. It asks me, hey, what would you like to call the new query? I'm just going to call this as details and say, OK. And once I do that, another query has been created called details, which is going to contain all the details, which is nothing but the previous three steps, source, change type and added custom. And this particular details query is now going to feed in to the all sales query. So if you take a look at the all sales query, take a look at the first step, which is nothing but the source step. Take a look. It's actually feeding from the details query. And from here, the query continues and builds up for the query. Now, this was not really the M trick that I believe you were expecting. In the next trick, I'm going to give you an absolutely crazy M trick, which is going to allow you to extract the step and call it out as a separate query on its own. It's going to be absolutely fun. Please take a look. Stay tuned. All right, trick number three. If you don't already know this, this is going to absolutely blow your mind. OK, you ready? Now, take a look at this particular query. Very standard query. I have the source change type, custom and group rows and sorted rows. The idea is that I would like to be able to extract any particular step of the query. Should I want? I would like to be able to extract the source step of the query and put that as a new query. If I want, I would like to be able to extract the added custom step or the group row step or the sorted row step. The problem is, however, as soon as you close the query and if I just happen to create a new query, the new query is going to fetch the query's last step. That means this is the output that I'm going to get, which is the, the output of the last step. I cannot really get the output of the interim steps of the query, which are somewhere there in the middle. Now I'm going to teach you a technique as to how do you do that. To be able to understand that technique, what you need to learn is how do records work in Power Query. So let's just for just, I don't know, maybe a minute or so understand how records work. And once you understand how records work, you'll be able to blow off people with this particular technique. Records. In order for you to understand records, the one thing that you need to know is that record is nothing but the value of any particular row, all the columns. Please take a look at the simple table that I have, five columnar table, and each row is nothing but one record. So this is the first record, this is the second record, the third record, the fourth record, and the fifth record. Now, once Power Query stores the record, it actually doesn't store the values of individual row. It's not going to store A and 10 and 50 and high and 500. It's actually going to store all of these values along with the column headers. That means products A, units 10, price 50, so on and so forth. Now, this is the way that we understand records in a table. It seems to be that all the records appear in rows and which is absolutely correct. But once you start to create records in Power Query using the M language, the records tend to appear as a columnar structure, but they are still rows of any particular table. Now, let me just help you understand records if we tend to create records manually through Power Query. So I have created another pseudo query right here, which is called understanding records. Let's just go take a look at the M code right here. Now, Unlike a typical query, there is no let statement, there is no in statement. All that I have is a single record. To be able to initiate a record, what you would need is a square bracket. Now I start and uh, with the square bracket and inside of the square bracket, I start to write the first is nothing but the name of the column. So name of the column is nothing but name and the value is Chandeep. Name of the second column is country and the value is India. Name of the third column is interests. Now there could be many, many interests. So as a value, I have actually created a list right here and list is nothing but curly brackets right here. All right. Now, once you, I commit to this particular record and I say done, what I'm going to get is a columnar like structure, but this is actually the row of uh, a data. Now in this particular row, I'm seeing that the row contains Chandeep, India and the list. And these are nothing but the names of the columns. And if I just peek into the list, I'll be able to see all the crazy hobbies that I have. Now, if you've understood the record, right now, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to come to my all sales query and turn this entire query into a record. Remember that record has got two parts. It has got a name and any particular value. Now, this particular value could be a scalar value like a letter, a name, an alphabet or a number. This could also be 
a list or a complete table we have understood that but it's going to have two things it's going to have the name the name of the column and it's going to have what it's going to have uh, the value right and the value could be anything it could be a text a number a list a table anything all right pretty good now if i go back to the all sales table and if i just hop over to my advanced editor where are you right here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of the let and the in statements and convert this entire query into a single record and i don't have to do any work so all that i do is delete this part and i say that this is nothing but a record and this is nothing but a record that's it i just delete everything and i keep the query as it is and this is nothing but a record right no change in the query now if we just take a step back and think about the two essential ingredients of the records we need to have two things the first thing that we need to have in the record is the name of the column so this is going to become the column name and this is going to become the value of that particular column now as soon as i click on okay what i get is all the steps that i had it on the far right they have actually become columns right here and the data of that particular step has been captured into a single table so this is the source this is the change type added custom group rows and sorted rows now if you're not really jumping off the chair as of now you haven't really understood what has happened we have actually done the magic and all that we need to do is utilize this particular query now take a look i'm going to create a blank query so new query and other sources and i'm just going to create a blank query right here in the blank query i'm just going to say that hey blank query why don't you refer yourself to the all sales you know query that i have created so i'm just going to say equals to all sales and just press enter and i get that particular record now the query which was right here had five steps now i can actually pick up any particular step that i need so if i just wanted the step which is nothing but group rows i click on the table and the group row step is open in front of me but if i wanted to pick up any other step from that five stage or five step query i can just delete it and i can go back to the record and i can just maybe pick up the sorted rows table and now you've actually created a full query as a record and there could be many many steps right here and you can actually link back to multiple queries and pick up any step any step of this particular query because this entire query is is like a record and you can actually pick up any record of this table now not too much of m code but highly highly useful in terms of what this can actually achieve in terms of sophistication of query writing process all right those were the three absolutely crazy wacky tricks that i wanted to share with you let me know which trick did you find the best and how many tricks did you already know of the three tricks that i shared and of course if you have any questions around this please feel free to drop in a comment and i'll be glad to reply in the end a big shout out about my dax and my power query courses in case you're starting out with power bi and you'd like to master the fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging problems of your data i'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses it's going to be super awesome thanks so much and i hope you stuck around until the end i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers bye i'm your coach randeep at goodly once again and in this video i'm going to talk about three absolutely wacky mind mind boggling ba 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 ba